In this video, we will see how Zamia Cat helps to explore our design via its signals. Let's open our test bench. Say we are interested in uh, address signal. We can look for its usages from the static analysis menu and show references. Here, we do not limit the scope. Instead of looking in the given file, local, we will choose the global scope, the whole design. And say we are interested in both drivers and readers. Here, uh, the green bubbles denote access places of the signal. Blue one is a declaration, and red stands for places where the signal is driven. We can see that signal address is accessed from within the clock process and three times from within the DRAM process, from the sensitivity list and from sequential statements. Here is the declaration and the first driver of the signal. The first driver resides uh, in the port map of a component, of a U1 plasma component. It's here, down here actually. This is the exact place mm. where the port is driven from within the component. So this port must be an output port. And if you press F3, we get to the decoration where we see that, yes, indeed, it's an output port of module plasma. Now let's go back. As you can see, CPU address is a driver, is a real driver of our initial signal address, which is declared in the test bench. Ideally, we are interested in the whole chain of drivers. And for this purpose, Zamia Cat provides a feature called uh, through signal assignment search. We go back to the initial signal declaration mm, or whichever usage of it and we go to the same static analysis and the same references but this time we select follow assignments. Now if we reach a signal or a variable in our search we will continue searching through it and this will result in a static slice of a program. For instance, if we are searching backwards, that is creating a backward slice, it can be specified here. Then we will obtain that part of the design which actually influences our signal of interest, signal address. So to see how it works, uh, let us limit the depth to free and see what happens. A bit different picture this time. First, we see already familiar CPU address driver. Previously, it was the only driver, right? But this time, the search goes on through this signal. Here is its declaration and its two drivers. The first one and the second one is right here. But instead of showing you the port map, if we click the second driver, we jump directly to the final assignment. And this assignment does not even sit inside this particular U1 CPU instance. As you can see, it sits inside this U1 CPU.U2 mem control.mem proc. So it sits inside another component within this UI CPU instance. So the final assignment, the final driver, resides here if you click in the mem control, mem control module. The same thing happens to the next driver, address rack. But this time something more interesting happens. First it's decoration, and then it's first driver of signal address rack, it's second driver, and then the clock signal, which is not a driver of course, but does indeed influence the process of obtaining a value by our signal address rack. Just the same way as other two signals do. They appear in the condition, in the precondition of our signal obtaining a value. 
and reset to. So once again, the first signal assignment search provides a static slice of the program. It reveals that part of the program uh, that influences our initial signal we run the search on. Well, there are two more things Zami offers for convenient use of this search feature. The first one is highlighting. We can reveal that part of the file which contributes to our signal of interest. Uh, remember this one? Mm. Nothing was in the test bench. Mm, plasma had two places. This one, you should remember. And this one too. The other one is navigation and indexing. You see that address rec signal is mapped to index 3, visible both here and here. So if you click the signal and push uh, the jump button, you get to the place where uh, this signal is analyzed. Mm. Then, for instance, here is an address var which is mapped to 7. We push the jump button and we are in the place where this variable is analyzed. In this way, we see the dependence cone of this variable, or what might be a cone of influence if it were a forward search instead of a backward search we did. Now we can jump back as well. Back, back. Finally, at the end of the search, there are those signals which we have reached but did not look into because of the specified depth limit. It was free, as you remember. So, in essence, uh, this is the border of the static slice. This is where we have terminated our search. Uh, well, of course, we can leave this address. We can leave this field blank to perform an unlimited search. And in this case, uh, the result will be quite a long list. Yeah. And if you highlight the assignments, uh, then most of the files will probably be highlighted. Yes. But not all, of course. Not all. By searching forward, we obtain the cone of influence for a signal. Let's take the same signal. But this time specify the forward direction with the limit of three assignments. So what we can see here, for instance, storage. An address signal influences variable storage because it acts as one of the operands of a condition driving the assignment. And storage in its turn influences the data variable because the value of data comes directly from storage. And the data in its turn influences the data read signal, for instance, and so on. Mm. Let's see the other files. Mm. The other files are almost unaffected by the address signal. And this is at least for the depth of free assignments. And finally, what I'd like to mention this feature, static slice computation, can be pretty nicely combined with an automatic debugger we described in a separate video. How? Guess yourself. <laughs>